Okay guys, since I have not seen any videos of people showing the changing of the tubes and or whatever their bias points are set for, I pulled out my brand new uh, Marshall Studio Vintage from its cab because there was only one way to, uh, you can change the tubes without pulling it from its, its head shell or from its case. Uh, there's certainly plenty enough room in there for to do that. However, uh, in order to test this with a uh, with a device such as this, you don't have enough room inside the case to do that. And what we're going to do is I want to see, even though there's no need to bias this amplifier like you would a traditional amplifier because it is already set with a cathode biasing. So theoretically... Uh, you could run any tube in here that is of the octal style, that being said, anything in the EL34 family, uh, 6L6, and, and even 6V6 I have seen some folks do. However, I was curious to see what kind of uh, um, power the uh, transformer is providing to the circuits and what they've actually got these biased to, what kind of uh, biasing in millivolts. So we're going to do that. So you're going to need, if you're going to do this sort of thing here, if you're going to test amps, first of all, bear in mind that even an amplifier, especially a tube amplifier that has been unplugged, even for days, can still retain high enough voltages within the capacitors to kill. So it is important that you observe and make sure that none of your fingers or anything metallic that can conduct electricity back into your body touches any of the components on the underside or top side of this amp chassis. As I said earlier, it can kill you. So now you're going to have to have, um, first of all, we're going to have to have power. So we're going to plug this thing in, but you also have to have a load on the, on the amp, that being either a speaker cab or a load box. And in my case, I am gonna use a load box in here in just a second, you'll see that. Uh, I do have to move some things around here uh, in order to do, to do this properly. I've already removed the power tubes because we're gonna put the tubes that came with it back in and see what the uh, bias looks like with those. And then I will remove those tubes and I've got a brand new set of Mullard tubes that we're going to put in there as replacements. Now, it looks like the uh, Marshall branded tubes are actually JJ's, JJ tubes, which aren't that bad. I mean, they don't sound bad. I just not a big fan of the, uh, uh, of the JJ tube. Um, just, it's just a preference thing. And it looks like they matched them uh, with an indication of 55 on, on both of these. Um, what that actually means, I have no idea. It's just how Marshall matched the tubes. And in just a second, we'll be back and we will be ready to start our test. All right, and we're back. The amp has pretty much stabilized. When you look at this uh, sensor here, it's showing that the plate voltage coming into these tubes is around 260 volts DC, 262 roughly. And the reading on the tube, uh, the plate current is showing 51.4 uh, milliamps. And on a standard amp, which would normally have like about 450 to 460, like the Marshall JCM 2000 that I have, um, the calculations are quite a bit different. So to figure out what this bias is, and, it, and it's not something I can change. As I mentioned earlier, it's cathode bias, so it is what it is. But the calculation is you take one tube, which is 25 watts max output, and you divide that 25 by the plate voltage exhibited by the amp, which in this case is 260. You take that answer, so it's 25, divided by 262, or 60 in this case, and then you come up with a percentage of that answer to determine what your bias set point should be. Uh, a lot of people will run their amps at, uh, you know, in the uh, 60 to 75 range. You can bring them all the way up to 85, which is pretty hot. Uh, if you've done this calculation already, 
you will figure I've uh, figured out already that a, a 52 or 51 milliamp DC bias set point on this is approximately 55% or 0.55, um, which seems to be okay with this amp. But now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and shut this amp down and I'm going to put the brand new Mullards in there, which uh, just in case you're wondering, this is some of the uh, readings that we're putting in there. So they are a matched set and we're gonna see how they do. Now, ultimately, it doesn't really matter what this bias point is. It is gonna be what it's gonna be. We can't change it uh, unless we modify the circuit to put a bias uh, pot on the inside of the amp. But uh, we're not gonna do that today, nor do I desire to do so. So we're just gonna swap these tubes out and uh, see what the reading is with a different set of tubes. Now, as I mentioned, these are uh, Marshall branded EL34s, uh, and by the appearance of the base plate, they are made by JJ. We'll be back in just a moment. Hang tight. And we're back. I now have the Mullard EL34s installed. And if you haven't already noticed, the, uh, the volts DC coming across the plates is actually about four volts less than they were with the JJ. If you remember, the JJ was running about 262. Uh, this one's stabilized around 258, uh, which has also changed where the tube is biased, uh, where before we were at 52.3 uh, in both sides. We are now just a little bit lower at 50.4 uh, uh, milliamps. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these these tubes sound in comparison to the JJ's. And you know, most people say that uh, there's no real appreciable difference between tubes uh, as far as the uh, tonal quality. It's kind of a mythical unicorn to the user's ear. So whether this makes my amp sound better, um, maybe just to me, maybe maybe to others, who knows. But uh, I was just curious to see what Marshall had done here because I have, like I said, I have not, I have yet to have an amp that I couldn't uh, set a bias point on um, and had to just accept whatever the circuit was producing. Um, so anybody out there that has a little more knowledge than me, you know, kind of chime in. What do you think the differences between these two uh, sets of tubes might be as far as you know, why the uh, voltage across the plate dropped by four volts. And uh, obviously because that dropped, we, we saw a drop in the plate current uh, in milliamps from 52 to uh, 50, almost this, almost a two milliamp difference, a little over two, two milliamps. So uh, down in the comments section, let us know what you think. Uh, I'm not gonna do a playthrough on this amp. This is just purely academic. Uh, to see what the tubes were biased at from the factory and what they what the bias might change to, if anything, with uh, a new set of tubes. Now, I don't have a multitude of tubes to try. Uh, otherwise, I might try and put in a different set of EL34s um, just to see, I, uh, see what the difference might be. So again, uh, hope you guys found this entertaining or at least educational. And uh, we'll catch you later.